Right, so it is day 107 of my attempt to plant a new tree every single day uh, for 2023 in my home here in Lusaka, Zambia. Uh, so let's get on with it. Right, so today we are going only about 20 meters away from where I planted yesterday, and we're going under a sycamore fig uh, where I planted a lychee. Uh, so this is area is sheltered by a sycamore fig, uh, some bamboo, a baobab tree, <laughs> what I think is a large cassia or senna, um, and then some native trees that have popped up in the middle of some prickly pear. It's quite a sheltered spot in many ways, um, and I did want to just increase the sort of under canopy to improve the sort of moisture retention in this area to help a little monster of Deliciosa come into fruit, uh, because it hasn't for a while, even though its offspring have. One of the things with shelter is it does mean that you don't get the sun scorching the top layer of the soil, and it doesn't die completely, which does mean you tend to have a healthier little sort of ecosystem, should we say, in the surface level of the soil, which really does have a visible effect. So whereas yesterday, as soon as I started digging, it was that very red, orangey red, very sort of iconically African soil in many ways. Uh, here, just 20 meters away, it is the same soil chemically, but there is so much more life in it that for the first sort of 30 centimeters or so, we're looking at a yellow-brown soil. It's just got a lot more life in it. It's not the color I would like to be. I would like to be much darker brown than this, but that color is the result of organic matter being in there, of bacteria being active in there, and of things moving through that, churning it up, keeping it alive and breathing, basically. It's also much easier to dig because it's a lot less compacted because it's not exposed to the rain, just squashing it down all the time. And again, that life moving in through there is going to break it up all the time and keep it a little bit more giving. Into this slightly better soil, we are putting in another little Anona squamosa. So these, this is the last custard apple I'm going to be planting this week, at least. It will not be the last uh, this year, because I do think they're a fantastic one for intercropping, and I do quite like them, even though the texture of the fruit isn't my favourite. Uh, so this is Anona squamosa. There are several other species of Anona that are called custard apples, but they do have quite distinct leaves, usually, as far as I know, um, and I've not seen them for sale in Lusaka. I do have a couple of things that were sold as cost apples that I bought in Livingston, which I believe are different species, but we will see when they flower and fruit. So this is getting another Dracaena fragrance going in with it uh, to, to mark it out. So this is the variant Messangiana, which I haven't planted for a while because it really doesn't like too much sun, and planting it in an exposed area at this time of year would be a death sentence for it. But planting it in a nice shady spot like this, especially with a good bit of water down at the bottom of the hole, uh, should give it a good start, and it shouldn't suffer too much. It will probably still wilt quite a lot, and it might even die back to the soil surface, but it should come back up again. We're also going to be putting in a couple of toxic barrier plants, which isn't really necessary because these, these plants are quite well defended in their own right. They don't really get many pests. They will probably be fed on by some of the native butterflies, but they're not fast breeding ones. They are very slow breeding, very pretty, and not going to cause any serious problems, even for a tree this small. Uh, but I did want access to the pots, so I thought I would plant these out while it's still a good time to do that, because when it gets cold they won't want to be going in wet. These are already rooted, so they shouldn't have any trouble going in wet at this sort of temperature, but if it was a bit colder than this, it could cause them to rot. Uh, so we're going to be putting in Senecio barbatonica, I think, which is one of the South African succulents. It should not be planted anywhere you have a lot of livestock, because it is pretty toxic if it's consumed. It's also quite bitter, uh, like a lot of the Senecios and ragworts. Uh, so most livestock won't consume it unless they're really hungry, but it's not worth taking that risk. But it is a lovely little succulent. It has bright yellow flowers in season, which are produced quite copiously when it does flower. It's not for a very long season, but it is quite quite abundant when it does go. Um, and that will be attracting in a lot of things like hoverflies, and those will be preying on things like the scale insects, which are the only real problem with the custard apple because they feed on the fruits, which are obviously the part you want to harvest, and when you have scale bugs all over it, they're not that appetizing. Um, the other one I'm putting in is a Calenco Digramontana, which is mostly because I, I don't understand why I still have one in a tin. It is also quite a nice demonstration of why if you have a succulent with fragile roots that you want to tr transplant at a later date, don't plant it in a pot or tin with a lip. Pot, pot it in one with a smooth side. Fortunately, Calenco Digramontana, if I dropped half a leaf here, it will probably grow. It's really just to get it away from my other little potted succulents that I am planting this one out. Um, and then I'm going to be putting in a piece of Aloe Neariensis, uh, which is going to be a nice little thicket around the base of this. It will also flower quite uh, abundantly, and that should look quite nice. It doesn't mind the shade at all. It's actually going into a sunnier spot than it was originally, uh, so this should be ideal for it. And all together, this should increase the humidity down at ground level here. It should really help that monstera, and it should help things like the lychee and anything else I put in here at a future date have a little bit more moisture year-round and grow a little bit better. 
Right, so that should be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, thank you for making it this far anyway. Um, and please tune in again tomorrow uh, when I will be planting something that is not a custard apple and I have not yet worked out what. Right, so this is Philanthus, which is a bee wolf. So they are one of a number of little wasps that look very bee-like and mostly prey on bees. They do create quite an interesting dilemma with sort of honeybee husbandry, uh, because a lot of people, because we are quite fire-prone around, around Zambia, will clear the vegetation around the hive. But that also means the bees have to go in and out of the entrance to the hive with no shelter, which means they are very, very prone to attacks from these little guys, who will then drag them away and you know, bury them with their larvae. Some species decapitate the bees, I think. Some of them just paralyze them and bury them in the sand in a little chamber with a few other bees and an egg, which will hatch and slowly devour them. Uh, so they're actually, uh, the family Crabonidae, which these belong to, is actually the family from which the entire super family that bees belong to evolved, uh, which is why part of the reason they are so bee-like. Another part is it's quite advantageous if you want to sneak up on a bee to look at least a little bit like a bee. Um, but yeah, these are great little insects, but if the, you have large numbers of them around, then do start to worry about what is happening to your honeybees. A few won't really distress a hive that much. Uh, honeybees are used to losing a few of their number, but if you have really large numbers, it can start to cause a real reduction in honey production because the worker bees are struggling to get in and out without getting eaten. But yeah, there you go. Uh, bee wolf. Beautiful little creature, uh, but not if you are a honeybee.